I want me to go to Las Vegas at once. As your attorney, I advise you to rent a very fast car with no top. Tape recorder for special music. Oh, Get cool. the hell out of LA. So, what we got here is a responsive um, overlay, pop up, light box. They sort of go under um, a couple it, of names. I guess it's just from a user. Their user cool experience standpoint, they're really nice and actually just go into a separate and... other screen. Now, there's a lot of cool ways to, or there's a lot of different options out there for an overlay. And, and this technique first came, I'd say one of the most popular ones was a thing called Lightbox. And Lightbox, if you remember, you saw this often for images. Now, Lightbox has, uh, let's say if Lightbox is the granddaddy and really one of the ones that has the most use. It's great, but I know Lightbox is limited to images and it's not responsive. It, it could be that they're working on something else or they forked the project, meaning someone else took the base code of Lightbox and started building it in a different direction to um, play videos and um, be responsive and all that. Anyhow, Lightbox was the granddaddy, and, and then the Fancy Box came out. I remember Fancy Box was, I think Fancy Box was the one that could play videos over there. Yeah, here we go. YouTube, iFrame, there you go. Um, but I don't think this one was responsive either. Yeah, look at that. So on a quest for looking for, um, even before this assignment, I'm looking for a nice, overlay plugin that's responsive and free because you'll notice that a lot of these video overlays and this kind of stuff they want you to cost that they want you to pay money for them like 50 60 bucks um, the one that I found that was okay my criteria was responsive uh, free lightweight and you know had a jQuery dependency since I already had jQuery in my project and and another one was easy to use because there's a lot of really cool ones out there that are you start looking at the directions and you're like, dude, way more options than I even want to deal with right now. Um, the one I found that I really like and I've used on a couple of different projects is this magnificent pop-up. This is a cool one that um, does exactly that. It does that light box screen for us. Oh, that's a pretty wild picture over there. Um, and of course, what's important too, besides images, is, is it does do stuff like videos. We have, there you go, and then uh, Google Maps if you wanted it. Um, that's pretty cool. So uh, this is the one that I'm going to go for. Now, let's see how we implement it. So here we go, documentation, and let's go through the instructions. So the first you know, the usual set of uh, dependencies or includes over here. It wants us to include the CSS for the project because that's what's making the background dim and, you know, sets it up the way it happens. Um, we have the jQuery dependency. So that's, we already have that listed in our project anyway, no big deal. And then we have actually the, you know, the, the thing that's making it work, which is the, the JS file that we need to include. So let's do just that. So when I open up the folder, I see in the distribution, here we go, in the DST, DIST folder, we have the three plugins. So um, I will add them here. Let me open up my boilerplate project. I'm going to start with my CSS folder pop this guy in here, CSS pop-up. Yeah, I don't see any image folder that I need to add like I had to do for the BX slider, so no worries there. Um, here's my JS folder, and I need to add the pop-up. Okay, and there you have it. So now I have them in my folders. Next order of business is actually putting them into the document. Um, okay, we've done this plenty of times before. I know I sound like a broken record, but let me say it again. Make sure that the include is after your CSS reset, that uh, normalized CSS, and before your uh, custom main one. So, uh, magnificent pop-up, there we go. Um, okay, that's in. Now, same thing if I go down to my... Uh, JavaScript includes, let me go up, 
and and in that JS folder, magnificent pop-up. Um, oops. Actually, I need to do that again. Okay, remember, um, it's after my jQuery include and before my main.js because uh, jQuery is the dependency and um, my custom main.js is where I'm going to initiate the project. Okay, um, cool. Let's see. Um, all right, so we included the files. That's good. Now we have to initialize the pop-up in our document. It says it should be executed after the document is ready, which we're all set over there because we have that. Um, okay, so unlike our other uh, options so far, uh, this one seems a bit more complicated. So before I even go down to the rest of the instructions, um, just by looking at what it's doing over here, I could tell that uh, I'm targeting a, well, actually, I'm not even going to put this in my document just yet, but so, because I, that's not going to work fully for me. Um, I see that I'm targeting something with an image dash link uh, class attached to it and then this thing which is unusual at least compared to what I've seen before in these other things it says type and in quotes it has image so this is an option from the uh, plugin over here and I know that I'm going to be embedding video so already in my head I'm thinking okay well obviously I'm going to have to look into that option before I even move on because I'm not looking to do images and I don't know how that's going to uh, work out for me so Let's see. So it says there's three ways to initialize the pop-up. Okay. Um, so first it gives us an example of the HTML, and then it says, uh, okay, it says that here is the most basic way. Again, exactly what I said. This thing has a class of test pop-up link, and then since it's an image type, it's uh, this is almost like the same example over here except with a different class. Okay. Um, all right, so what's the second one? It says, from a group of elements with one parent element, and then I see, same as the first, but this method, this, but use this method if you're creating a pop-up from a list of elements in one container. Yes, this is sort of close to what I want, because if I follow the first option, short of the image type, which is sort of still I don't know about, I know that I would have to go into my HTML and add a class to all of these images for it to target. Um, that wouldn't be too big of a deal to do, you know, but, um, you know, I'm lazy. I don't want to necessarily do that unless there's other options, right? So uh, because of that, I'm thinking that this group of elements sounds pretty good. So let's let's just look at this um, option over here. So here is something that says div class parent container. We have something similar over here. We have a section, and in this section, we have these images that we could add a link to. And look at that. So here is the magic. It's saying parent container magnificent pop-up delegate a so this is like now pointing this option that the author made is pointing to whatever element has an a in there which is exactly it right because we're going to have an a element that's a link to something um, and type image well this looks like exactly what i want um, i may bring this code right in but let me just look at whatever the third option is here which already it looks pretty complex it says the items option defines data for the pop-up to ignores all attributes uh, on the target dom element so what this option is telling me is that it's looking for something in particular like a particular image on some button that's going to be the source that it pops up um, this option, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't even really care to go too further into understanding how this works at this point because it seems way more complicated than what I want to do. So image number two is what I'm going to do. So let me go to my JS, and I'm just going to go right underneath my BX slider, bring that in. Okay. Um, yes, uh, the parent container, that's not going to work. 
Um, my parent container in my example is section, right? That's the parent of the image thing. Um, so I could actually remove this and use section. Using section in itself is a little risky because um, if we don't have full control of um, of what's in here of our HTML, which if you're building something for a system where you have like multiple, like a front end and a back end person working on it, and you know, you may need to add a class to it um, to you know uniquely target it. But for me, I think uh, it's all good. It's all it's all good as far as I'm concerned. We may have to revisit this when we get deeper, but just to keep it easy I'll say section magnificent pop-up uh, delegate a because it's going to be a link and then uh, image is type obviously this isn't going to work but let me just see if we get something to happen because now I have everything included and I've initiated it let's see what I could do well first order business besides we even bother you know refreshing it in our browser is I want to actually see uh, I need to actually create a link for this thing so um, let me go to YouTube and I'll go uh, fear and loathing trailer there we go and here it is before we go there I'm just gonna copy that URL here and I'm gonna wrap under new releases, here we go, a href equals, then I'll put that in there and close it, and then I'll close that. The only other thing I want to do just for visual ease for me, since this is my one test example, is I'm going to pop this in forward slash EEE -E -E, because it's going to change the color. Uh, that's all I'm looking to do. And now let's see, I'm going to refresh. Okay, cool. Here it is. And when I click on it, loading, the image could not be loaded. Well, uh, and, you know, now it's just linking to it, which is a pretty cool option, too. Um, okay, the image is obviously, we go back to that thing that it says the image type isn't what we're looking for. So um, it does do video. So let's go back and see what they're talking about over here, because we're going to have to dig a little deeper into the options. Uh, image type, we have the image type here, and then we have all these other types, iframe, inline, and Ajax. Um, out of all these, I mean, I'm thinking, I, well, I know it's an iframe type, but at least I know that I could start my investigation here, content types. I could start my investigation here, and, and gives me a little more info. And somewhere it should say, if I scroll down, maybe I'll just quickly scanning the documentation, I could see that, oh, look at this, right under iframe, I have a YouTube link, so guess what, uh, I, I, I hit it. Um, iframe, this is the, you know, it's, it's funny, it's not so clear over here, the documentation, that this is the option that you use, because this is showing the options options with all this other markup, but it's really just as simple as changing this image type to iframe. Cool. So now we're excited it's going to work. We're going to give it a refresh and we're all done. And oh, you get this little not happy guy right here. Okay, here's the deal. Um, this is not a broken issue. Actually, let me start the upload here. I'm going to now upload this thing to my um, host before I assume it's not working. And while I'm waiting for it to upload, I'll sort of t talk about it. Um, you know, the deal is, is you don't, we followed the instructions, and this is one of these hair things that make you pull your hair. We followed the instructions, and everything seemed to be going fine, except that doesn't work. You don't really know if it's working or not um, until you upload it to your domain. And I'll tell you why. Um, there's this thing called cross-browser scripting, and I know we've probably touched on it before. What happens is, is this thing's not going to load because it's we're doing it locally and it's calling an external domain. So if you find yourself in a similar situation and you're testing and you're trying to link to content that's um, content that's somewhere else, like iframed content locally from your own computer, um, and it doesn't work, before you 
go out of your way to try to debug the code and do this, that, and the other thing, just give it an upload and see if that fixes it. Because, um, well, I'll show you. Because because it does actually fix it uh, without doing much of anything else. So this thing's located at my domain here, classroom resources, web two, test. And when I look, okay, here's my, you know, obviously my hosted implementation that I've been working locally and this thing doesn't work locally. Look what happens. So, uh, there you have it. It'll work. Um, it'll work. You just got to make sure it's loaded to your uh, to your host it's because of that uh, cross domain scripting's uh, same origin policy um, that you want to make sure that you're both online and not off